Hey everybody, I'm Michael McClintock and this is lesson three for beginning guitarists. All right, so today I want to switch gears a little bit and talk about the right hand and specifically using a guitar pick. Um, I recommend for beginners to use a thinner guitar pick. So for example, a 0.6 uh, or less, I think is, is optimal. And I'm using a slightly larger guitar pick. This is a, a triangular pick that I like uh, because there's just more to hold on to. So I'm going to take the pick like this and with my right hand, I've got my thumb up like this and my index finger kind of at a hook. And I'm going to come around and I'm going to grab the pick like that. So I've got a good portion of contact, my index finger and the pick. So I'm coming around, I'm grabbing it like that. Feeling very comfortable. And this takes a little bit of time to find the sweet spot. There's a lot of people that have different picking techniques and how to hold the pick. But for, for the, big, the beginning, I recommend that. You can just place the pick right there and bring the thumb around and hold on to it. Like I said, be patient. You'll find how you like to do it, but I feel like this is a fairly common way to do it. And uh, the second thing is relaxing your wrist. Um, when I used to teach a lot, and I had students that you know, would drive, uh, I would kind of explain to them like the motion of jingling your keys. You just kind of relax the hand, let it drop, and then like pretend you have a set of keys in your hand. Or if, um, if it were children and they had a, a dog and they would maybe show something to the dog that you know, they wanted them to, to get excited about, like a tree, right? They would just kind of wag it in front of them. This is the motion that I like to use for strumming the guitar. So I've just got a nice relaxed wrist and I'm just kind of slapping it across the strings. So we need to get comfortable doing a simple downstroke. So you're just gonna try to start from the low E, push all the way through to the high E, get all the strings and just push down like that, right? So I'm putting some wrist into it. Simple at first, but just get comfortable doing a downstroke. Now we're going to do a similar motion to come up, right? Kind of the opposite. This for me feels more uncomfortable at first, but you'll get used to it. I feel like we have gravity working for us when we do a downstroke, but to come back up, got to fight that gravity but I've also got a little bit of elbow working but not too much it's a lot of wrist but if you need to put the elbow into it as well that's fine so I've got some elbow and some wrist and coming up coming down coming up So the strumming pattern I would like to introduce to you today is going to be a fairly simple one. We're just going to go down, up, down, down, up, down. And if we wanted to count that in 4-4, four, four, you could just count 1 and 2, 3 and 4. 1 and 2, 3 and 4. 1 and 2, 3 and 4. So now we're going to apply the strumming pattern to some chords that we've already learned, but the chords are gonna be in a slightly different order. So we're gonna have a G chord, a D chord, E minor, going to C. So we're changing up what we've learned previously in lessons one and two. So if anybody needs to go back to review that, by all means, please do. But we're gonna be playing G, which is uh, fret three on the low E, fret two on the A, open D, open G, fret um, three on the B, and fret three on the high E. 
I've got my second finger, my first finger, my third finger, and my fourth finger. That's going to go to D. And remember, we've got a guide finger. My third finger doesn't have to do anything. I'm just going to try to, as fluidly and quickly as possible, jump my first and second finger over to um, fret 2 on the G and fret 2 on the high E. So G going to D. Now we're going to go from D to E minor, but in this case we don't have any guide fingers. But my first and second fingers are on the same frets that they need to be. They're on fret 2. So all I really need to do is focus on those two fingers and shoot them forward to the A and D strings at fret 2. So that's not a horrible change going from D to E minor. Just remember to kind of try to move those fingers as a family, you know, as a unit. I've said that in all these lessons now. So take them off, move them forward, and place them down at the same time. And now we're going to go from E minor to C. We haven't done this chord change yet, but we have a guide finger. Our second finger doesn't have to do anything. So when we've got E minor here, our second finger stays put. Our index finger is going to go to the B string at fret 1, and our ring finger is going to shoot forward to the A string at fret 3. So, second finger acting as a guide. Shooting the ring finger forward, bringing the index finger back. Okay, and that's going to take care of our chords. We've got G, D, E minor, and C. So now I would like to apply this strumming pattern to the four chords that we've already learned. And uh, this chord progression is the chord progression to about a million songs. I'm going to put a link in this video to a group called the Axis of Awesome, and they do a really cool uh, mashup, if you will, of this exact chord progression. Um, and they sing about 40 or 50 songs that it works with. So once you get this under your fingers, you're going to have access to a lot of material. So, and now to combine all that with our strumming pattern and our chord pattern. Remember, we're just going down, up, down, down, up, down. Nice and relaxed, nice and relaxed. You know, using the wrist, using some elbow. If you drop your pick, don't worry about it. This happens a lot. It takes a little bit of time to get this comfortable, so just be patient and you'll get there, I promise. And so we're just gonna simply apply this with this. So we've got G. Now, as seamlessly as we can, going to D. Going to E minor. And going to C. Now try not to break the rhythm. Again, G. Remember those guide fingers. No guide finger here, but move the, fan uh, the fingers as a family. And we have a guide finger there. G. minor and C. Right? So already by our third lesson, we're in a pretty good spot. So just super fast review, right? We've got our strings E, A, D, G, B, and E. We've got frets 1, fret 2, and fret 3, finger 1, 2, 3, and 4. That should all be ingrained by now. And then we've got these chords, right? We've got G, we've got D, E minor, and C. And then we've got our pick, right? So remember, taking the pick in between our index finger and our thumb, right? So you can place the pick in your index finger like this and wrap your thumb around. You might not be able to see this so well, but just so you get a view of the thumb, placing it there, like I said, this takes a little bit of time. Everybody's got 
kind of their own way that they figure out after a while. But in, you know, the more pick that you have, the better it's going to feel. You don't want it to feel wobbly. You know, try your best not to hold it like that. Um, you know, so just kind of get a pretty good amount of it under your fingers, and then just keep your uh, your wrist loose, right? Just kind of pushing through. Um, and all I'm doing here with my left hand is I'm just dampening the strings. I'm just holding all the strings gently and getting that kind of sound. And you just want to sit there and practice that until it, it feels natural. It takes time. But that's just a downstroke, right? I'm just downstroke, downstroke. And then the same thing with the up. You know, being kind of aggressive with it. Trying to loosen up, being aggressive, right? That's just isolating down and up. Down, up, and then down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down. You put those two things together and you're making music already after your third lesson, which is pretty exciting. G. So that was lesson three. So I hope you all enjoy that and you've learned something from this. And I hope to see you all very soon. So stay healthy, stay safe. I'm Michael McClintock and have a lovely Thursday.